this case is a very typical case uh, of presentation in patients with Waldenstrom's mark or ovulinemia. As we can see, this patient has pancytopenia, which means the white blood cells, the hemoglobin levels, and the platelet counts are below normal. The next best step uh, for a clear diagnosis in a patient like this is to perform a bone marrow restoration and biopsy. That will give us an idea of what's happening in the patient's body that is causing this pancytopenia. In this case, for example, we have the presence of a lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma in the marrow. And when we looked at the malignant cells, they have very typical markers for Waldenstrom's, which is, in general, markers that are atypical for other conditions. Uh, we do not have CD10, which is classic for follicular lymphoma. We don't have CD5, which is classic for CLL or mantle, mantle cell lymphoma. So in all, uh, these features of non-specific findings in some way are specific for Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. So once we make a, a, a certain diagnosis, we can actually confirm it. And the confirmation in, in this case will be a genomic alteration in the gene called MYD88. This is a genomic abnormality that we have described in over 90% of patients with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. So in this case, as the patient presents with a lymphoplasmacytic lymphoma in the marrow, the patient has an elevation on, on his serum IgM, as well as the presence of the MYD88 mutation, in my mind, the likelihood that this patient has Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia is over 99%. In terms of the initial treatment for patients with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia, we have multiple options, and uh, it is important to understand that the treatment has to be personalized. The way we approach a patient with neuropathy is different than how we approach a patient with hyperviscosity, for example, and how we approach a patient who's 55 years old is not gonna be the same as we approach a patient who's 85 years old. So age, performance status, patient symptoms, patient's genomic profiling, and, and other factors really play into a role in how we make decisions in terms of treatment options. Uh, I think the option um, of using ibrutinib in this patient in the frontline setting is very reasonable. And there are many reasons for that. Uh, in one scenario, uh, we do have data that shows that patients who carry the MYD88 mutation, as this patient does, have a higher likelihood of responding well to ibrutinib. Uh, it's a very simple um, treatment. Uh, patients take one pill every day, and they have to take it indefinitely for as long as the patient uh, can tolerate it. And this is very, reminds me of how we treat patients with uh, diabetes, for example, hypertension, in which patients take one medication. As long as the medication is controlling the patient's symptoms or, or problems, then the patients continue taking it, it indefinitely. I think the issue of plasmapheresis comes a lot, specifically in patients like this, in, in whom the IgM is elevated and the viscosity is elevated, uh, but the patient is asymptomatic. My practice is if the patient is asymptomatic, I'd rather do not uh, plasmapherese. Uh, there are some issues with plasmapheresis. We need to uh, put a central line, and that, that can cause issues with bleeding, thrombosis, and infections, and things like that. There are issues with blood pressure increase and decrease in patients who get this plasmapheresis as well. So if the patient does not need it, typically we not do it. Now, if the patient were symptomatic, that would be a different story. If the patient were to have any of the symptoms that we mentioned earlier or any changes in the retinal vessels, that would be a patient in whom I will plasmapherese. My practice is to actually plasmapherese at least three times in the first week to make sure that we decrease the IgM levels to a, to a point in which is manageable and will give us time to actually institute treatment. Um, plasmapheresis is not definitive treatment for Waldenstrom's. So it should be follow, followed by actual therapy for Waldenstrom's. So um, I would discourage patients or, or practitioners to actually plasmapherese somebody over time and, and kind of to delay therapy, I think it should be used to transition into therapy.